today's issue, we have this carrier unit, apparently not cooling. Although, I wouldn't say that it's not cooling. I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, I mean, there's lots and lots of water coming out of it. Uh, what is this, a uh, 48 four ton? Or am I reading that wrong? I can't remember carrier nomenclature. But anyway, they're having comfort issues downstairs. Now, my work order, my first work order is for this one. My second work order is for the kitchen unit. Um, I don't know, since this was in such good shape, I would almost venture to say this one's probably working, but it's trying to do the, the entire restaurant by itself because that one back there probably failed, but we'll see. I can hear something running. Feels like the condenser fans are going. I'm gonna pull this side panel off, see how many compressors we have, how many are running. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take a supply temp. See what kind of air we're pushing first. And uh, yeah, then we'll go from there. Well, rudimentary supply air testing didn't come out with spectacular results. I'm apparently only getting about 70 degree supply air down into the space. My uh, makeup air damper, it's about one inch, roughly. It's dirty as crap. I don't know if you guys really see that on camera, but it's pretty dirty. Right now, at least of my concerns, I'll grab it and wash it downstairs a little bit later. Got my cover panel off. I didn't want to turn it off without seeing this little blinky light in there. No blinkies. No blinkies, constantly on, means normal operation. However, that's probably not the case since we're only putting out 75 or 70 degree supply air. So I'm gonna turn it off, drop this cover, and uh, see if I can see anything more. I shut it off. I verified both fans were spinning in the correct direction. Um, I immediately noticed this thing, which that's new to me. I've never ever seen it before on a rooftop unit just dangling right there. I don't know if it's supposed to be dangling. There's a spot that it apparently goes into over there. These brown wires looks like they might go over to that liquid line solenoid way over there. I see some oil. Filter dryer looks like it's been changed possibly. 99% sure that's been changed, so that oil could be old. Hard to say. The evaporator over there looks like it's sweating a, a wee little bit. Can't really see it very well from this vantage point right over there. Huh, well, I'm gonna have to stare at this for a few minutes and try to make sense of all this. I haven't seen a setup like this before. So, is this a heat pump? Is that acting as a reversing valve? I have no idea. Can't imagine that's the case. I mean, since it's gas fired, right? How weird. Quick visual, guys. Uh, filters look good. I kind of, I've already looked behind there and I almost dropped my phone down in the vent, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, but yeah, I pulled the filters away, the evaporator looks good. I came over here and inspected the blower. Blower looks good. I mean, belt looks brand new. A little bit of a ridge. In the pulley, not terrible. I'm not a real big fan of how deep that belt sits inside that pulley, but right now that's the least of my concerns. I got the manual out because I'm going to read up a little bit on this compressor real quick because I'm not real familiar with the two speed aspect of it. Um, I mean, come on, bro. 
I mean, I get the basic concept, right? So we have this, which apparently is like 24 volts. Uh, input, output, 24 volts. Rectifier inside. Um, I mean, I assume when there's a call for two-stage cooling, that back there would activate some sort of uh, a solenoid or a slide or some internal mechanism that's going to allow it to fully compress the refrigerant. Um, I mean, initially, once I had this off, my suction line was cool, not cold like it normally is. Um, so that's what I'm going to assume it does. So once I turn it back on, I might just check this just for 24 volts just to be sure. Um, I don't know, maybe there's an issue with it or maybe, I mean, maybe it just fell right out. Maybe it just slipped right out of there and just started dangling and that's the issue we got. I mean, generally speaking, this unit looks pretty nice, so I can't imagine there's anything real crazy going on with it. Let's see. If I had to guess, I'm, I'm guessing this relay is what controls the, um, what sends power to that rectifier over yonder. So I looked into the manual. Not much to go on that really explained this. That manual is more about a VR, uh, VRF system. This is not that. Uh, real quick though. If you can tell by all the hot block that's on that TXV, that's been replaced before. It doesn't appear like the uh, fixed metering device has been switched out with the TXV. I think the TXV itself has just been replaced. So essentially what happens is this little relay right here energizes that solenoid back there. I'm still looking for what exactly controls this and sends power to this. Uh, but like I said before, pretty sure that will uh, initiate some sort of mechanical device inside there that'll let the compressor pump at uh, full capacity in stage two cooling. And then we have our, our both of our stages uh, cooling. But, you know, the other thing that's kind of concerning is even if one stage was cooling, I should have gotten a little bit less of a supply air temperature. Um, but, yeah, we'll revisit that in a few minutes. Once we get, once we make sure that both sides are running, we'll revisit that whole idea. So what I'm going to do now is just power it on. I'm going to make sure that relay has power, see if I can hear that solenoid close. And then we're going to check this for 24 volts. So... Meter's ready. Probably some sort of delay with the thermostat. It is a trained thermostat for some reason. On a energy management system, I believe. I got 24 volts to my thermostat circuit. Nothing coming back from cooling just yet. This might take a minute. All right, gang, you guys are learning right along with me in this process. So I got 22.9 volts DC. I'm measuring in DC because I came down here and I found that it is indeed a loader, as I suspected, right there. And if we read note four, compressor loader plug contains bridge rectifier to convert AC to DC. So I got the right idea to measure for DC instead of AC, which I was getting uh, some DC voltage. Exactly what it should be, I don't know. Uh, but I'm getting 22 coming back on. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check up here, right here on my control board. I'm getting zero. I might need to get my other hand on this. Yeah, but see on this black wire coming out of the board, I should have 24 volts. Right now I have it jumpered out, initiating a call, but um, according to the schematic, right down here on this black wire that goes into the loader, if we trace this backwards, it goes down through here, through the high pressure two, low pressure two, which is, which comes off of our violet, which is just the jumper from four to five. And that comes down from reheat, huh? 
Well, I didn't suspect that. Is that? Or am I just missing something? Let's see. Follow this very carefully with her eyes. As it'll trick you. Yeah. Alright, so. I don't know if I was getting good connection or if I just didn't have it at the time. Let's see. So I do have... I do have the 25 volts coming out of our control board on this black wire, which goes down into our rectifier control. I'm just gonna shut it down again. And that rectifies AC to DC, so I got 22.9 volts of DC right there. Let's go back to staring at this real quick. So, I think I'm just looking at the schematic wrong. Um, now, we don't have an economizer in this unit. We just got the plug. It's just bypassed over in the filter section, right? So my Y2 signal, let's see, Y2 is right there. Field control wiring, blah, 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 goes down into terminal number four, turns into yellow. And then the yellow goes over here and then it just returns back on the orange, I believe. And the orange comes back over here uh, where's the orange go? Where's the orange go? Orange goes right there. And from here, I'm guessing orange goes up into this. Orange comes back down over here. Fuck, what I go back that way for? That doesn't make any sense. This makes my brain hurt. Alright, so I think I made sense of this. Now, you guys who are intimately familiar with this or can read schematics a lot better than I can are probably just smashing your computer screen right now if you even stuck around long enough to watch this. But anyway, here's what I surmise. Uh, let's see, so we got Y2, comes down, goes into terminal number four, yellow, goes over to our economizer bypass plug, goes up, or yeah, I assume it goes up over here. And then it comes out orange, and I thought it maybe was going into this orange wire over here, but I'm pretty sure it's going into orange number three when it comes back from the economizer. I could be completely wrong, but this is what I think is going on. It comes over here, goes down this dotted line, and from here it would jump over to this, which is jumper number seven, because this takes us right over to the circuit we need to be at, which is number four, where it goes into our violet, that jumper wire that's... Um, right in between our brown and our black and this violet would jumper it over to our low pressure high pressure and then it will come back into our black and then from there it would go into our loader now that whole circuit seems to be fine uh, I'm not actually troubleshooting any of this it just bothers me when I can't initially read something like this and it was just a bit confusing so that's what I'm pretty sure uh, that's how I'm pretty sure it's, it, you know the voltage is running like I said I'm pretty sure it goes out number four goes through our bypass plug and it comes back on orange number three. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. If I am, leave me a comment below, teach me something. I'm all right with learning. I'm not so prideful that I can't learn from anybody. All right, so anyway, I am uh, thinking maybe this just wiggled itself out of there. Um, so I'm gonna plug it back in and see see what happens. Bit of a new development here guys i had everything running uh, right now i have the loader plugged in the little plug that i was playing with that's plugged in to the loader right now and i had everything running and uh i was waiting for a w2 signal to kick on right and i never got a w2 signal so i just put a jumper on there as soon as i put my jumper on there my transformer popped now i've jumped out w2 before with the loader unplugged so that leads me to believe that we have some sort of loader issue. And since it was, I don't know, whatever the, the amp draw of the loader is, I'm assuming that uh, our loader is bad inside the compressor. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research because research, I'm curious to know, um, I mean, I'm fairly confident I understand the principles of that compressor, two-stage compressor, we're just, energizing a loader to fully load the compressor um, and I assume there's a solenoid inside there some sort of device that's inside there right and whatever that is I'm assuming is going bad because it's drawing high amps um, 
but what I don't know is how to properly check that. Like I'm gonna ohm it out here in just a second on the compressor itself and just see. But that would explain why it was just unplugged and dangling there. So let me uh, take this stuff down and uh, I'm just gonna ohm it out. I don't know what it should be, but um, maybe it'll see on the compressor somewhere, but I doubt it. So yeah. Try to get back here and ohm out this this loader right here. See, the thing is, is I'm touching the leads, so I'm adding to the resistance with my body. Let me see if I can. There we go. I think I'm off of it now. Ugh. Okay, I'm off of it now. 0.5 ohms, very low resistance. All those numbers jump around, that was when I was touching the leads, see, moving them around. But uh, I also checked, we're not shorted to ground in any way, so my thought process is, is our loader is bad. Now, again guys, this is the first time I've ever seen this sort of setup before, but my buddy Ty Brandeman, apparently he's a little bit familiar with these, so I'm going to reach out to him actually and kind of pick his brain on this. But I'm 95% sure our compressor just needs to be replaced because that loader inside of it's bad. Um, and that's based off of, I have, I have 24 volts going down to this rectifier plug. And then I have 22 volts DC coming out of the rectifier plug, um, which is close to our 24 volts DC that we're supposed to have, 22.9 to be exact. So that's right. And... The only thing I did was plug it in and then I just put a jumper across uh, to energize Y2 beforehand. Last time when I was measuring it, I did the same thing, but I didn't have it plugged in. So once I plug it in, it pops our popper on our transformer and we lose all control voltage. So yeah, like I said, I'm 95% sure we just need a new compressor, um, but just to satisfy my curiosity, I'm gonna reach out to somebody who's smarter than me and uh, learn a little bit more about that compressor. So, yeah. Let's see how that goes. So tune in, guys. There will be a part two to this. And uh, hopefully that part two will entail changing out this compressor, or at the very least, uh, coming back with whatever parts that I learned that it could possibly need. But it'll most likely be a new compressor, filter dryer, um, you know, just the common stuff.